Hi, my name is Scott, and I am an engineer on the CAMIS team. Today, I'm very excited to help you get to know the CAMIS beta release. For those who don't know what CAMIS is, CAMIS is a JPEG library designed to make a camera app development easier. As developers, we know writing a camera app is not an easy task. First, you have to deal with Camera 2 API, which is powerful and flexible, but it is challenging to do the things right. Second, given the large number of Android devices in the market, it's time consuming to achieve a consistent experience across all the device types. Often this requires a long running if else section within your code. And finally, before publishing your app on the Play Store, testing on a real device is a must. And testing across a large number of devices can be both costly and time consuming, as your code may require device specific phases to allow for a consistent experience. With Camera S, we fix all of this problem for you. We provide an easy to use API that is easy to understand and significantly reduce the total amount of code you must write. It inherits the flexibility of Camera 2, abstracts away the difficult bits in favor of use case best approach. Currently, three use cases are supported. Preview is for display the camera preview. Image capture is for high quality still image capture. Image analysis is for frame buffer access for analysis like object detection. And we have preview view to handle the complexity of the preview transform for you. Second, Camera S ensures application have consistent experience across 94% of Android devices starting from API 21. We have allowed to Camera 2 API specific, Android version specific, and device version specific phases under the hood so developers get a seamless experience regardless of the device. And finally, we invest a lot in our test lab so you don't have to. Our Camera S test labs runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It has devices across a wide range of OEMs and Android versions. With Camera S, we take care of device compatibility issues for you so you can focus more on the application you want to write. Now you know what benefits Camera S offers Let's talk about what's new in the first half of 2020. Device compatibility is always our first priority, and we have put a lot of efforts into fixing device issues and improving test lab infrastructure in terms of scale and the test coverage. And for the preview, we have added more API to the preview view in order to satisfy developers' needs. And for the needs of advanced developers, we added an OpenGL sample on LSP repository. This is a guidance for developers who want to use OpenGL on top of Camera S. And for the image analysis, we have heard from developers that two of the most common functions they need are first, convert from YUV to RGB, and second, use MLKit or TensorFlow Lite to analyze the image retrieved from image analysis. We have introduced samples for both of these needs, and hopefully, it can help you implement the functionality you need quickly. Let's dive into the details of each item. Ever since Camera S reached beta, we have been focusing on the stability and the device compatibility. And thanks to the feedback from developers and partners, we are able to address many device issues. Issues like wrong preview aspect ratio, fail to switch camera, or tap to focus networking. These kind of issues are very frustrating because you wish it would just work on all devices. This is why we are committed to fixing any device issue we have found to provide you a consistent API that just work on all devices. And we have learned that our test cases are not enough for some scenarios. So we have added more test cases for the new scenarios that could potentially cause the issues. For example, we have enhanced our rotation, UI widget integration, and aspiratio test. And we are happy to announce that the capacity of our cameras test labs has grown to three times the size compared to what we had last year. We now have 88 devices representing 400 million active Android devices running in our lab, and we will keep adding more in the future. Preview is a very useful and easy UI widget for application to display the preview. It requires no transform, and what's better, Preview makes your application more power efficient and low latency. It does this by using Surface View under the hood and if the device is not compatible with Surface View, 
it will fall back to texture view automatically. It also supports scale type, so you can choose how to scale the preview inside the preview view. It also makes it very easy to implement a tap to focus. And today, we added two APIs to the preview view. First, get preview stream state API. This API allows application to be notified when the preview is streaming or idle. This is useful for applications who want to avoid displaying a temporary black screen while the preview is starting up. For example, they can show a press holder image on top of preview view when the preview is idle, and hide the press holder when the preview is streaming. Second, get BMAP API. This API allows application to get a snapshot of current preview display in the preview view. Getting a BMAP is not as easy as it looks because first, the underlying view could be a surface view or texture view, which has different ways to get a BMAP. Second, get a, the BMAP you get from the view is not properly transformed or cropped like the preview view does. So the new get BMAP API allows application to get a BMAP 100% identical to what you see in the preview view. Preview view is easy and painless, but why if you want to do more? Maybe you want to draw some advanced effects on top of camera output, or perhaps you would like to integrate the camera preview into your existing OpenGL, Vulkan, or Game Engine Celerity app. Let's see how we can do this through the preview service provider API. So here you have your own hardware accelerated rendering set in your app. The first step is you create a surface texture in your rendering set. And then you create a surface using the surface texture. And then you provide a surface to the preview service provider. The service provider will also provide signal to your application when it is safe to release the surface. And after that, your application can now easily receive the camera frames in the surface texture and your rendering set can do anything you want on the surface texture with using OpenGL. For example, of using OpenGL with camera S, see our sample app on LSP, which we link here. And don't worry about the long URL. We will provide a link as well as other link below this video. The goal of image analysis is to make it super easy to integrate the libraries that are great at analyzing things, such as TensorFlow Lite or MLKit or your own image library. Here we provide you a list of sample codes that can make the integration easier. First, YUV to RGB converter. The image retrieve from image analysis is in YV format. This is a native format in the Android camera system. And but we know that many of the libraries require the image to be RGB format. So these utilities provide an easy and fast way to convert from YUV to RGV. It uses render script under the hood so it is efficient and how we accelerate it. It is able to achieve 30 FPS with 640 by 480 resolutions across devices like Pixel 3 SL, Samsung S10, and Huawei P20. The power of image analysis is not so obvious because it just provides fan buff access. But once we combine it with state of our machine learning libraries, it suddenly becomes a super powerful toolkit. It allows application to do something very interesting, things like Test recognition, image labeling, or detect your own object like a hot dog using your own train model. To give you a quick start of this, we introduce two samples for you. First, MLKit sample. MLKit bring Google's machine learning expertise to the mobile developers. These samples showcases how to do real-time test recognition and translate it real-time using MLKit and camera S. And if you prefer to use your own train model, then you are probably more interested in TensorFlow Lite. So we provide you a second sample showing how to do real-time object detection using your own model with TensorFlow Lite. Now we have a better understanding of camera apps better to this. Here are what we're going to do in the near future. First, we are committed to facing as many issues as we can. And we take your reported issues very seriously. So please do find issues in our issue trackers or join our discussion group. We are more than happy to resolve your problems. And we will keep investing in our camera as test lab to improve the device compatibility continuously. And also we have some work in progress to improve the camera as performance. Most importantly, to reduce the latency of camera opening and the taking pictures. And finally, we will keep investigating the pain points of running camera as app. 
and bring you more samples, tools, utilities to make Camera Ads easier to use. Here are some useful resources. You should check out documentation, samples, guides if you want to learn the basics of Camera Ads. And we also provide a step-by-step -step collab if you want to quickly see what it takes to write a Camera App. The Camera Ads discussion group is a place where we primarily get the feedback from developers. We love to hear the many different ways in which developers are using Camera Ads. And finally, an issue tracker. Please find out any issue that you think are caused by Camera Ads. It not only helps your project, but also benefits the whole Camera Ads community. And all the links mentioned above, including the samples, are also listed below this video. Thanks for your time. We hope Camera Ads can help you create more and more exciting and unique Camera Apps. Mm -hmm.